Time for tonight's panel. Melbourne City Councillor Nick Reese via Skype, as well as Sky News outsider, Herald Sun columnist, my good friend Rita Panahi here in Melbourne. Uh, I'm going to start, if we can, with these anti-vaxxers, Rita, uh, in and out of letterboxes in Sydney. We've got other people trying to flog stuff on the internet, $130 and more that'll save you from coronavirus, they claim. Sadly, people are buying it. People are caught out by all of this. Uh, what can we do to shut it down? And surely this is the worst and most craven of all the charlatans, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Those who are profiting from this, I think there can be some fairly harsh penalties immediately because they're misrepresenting what their products do. So that would be a fairly straw straightforward thing. But the people who are letter uh, dropping leafless letterboxes, scaring the bejesus out of people, saying this whole virus is a hoax, it's some sort of Rupert Murdoch, Bill Gates conspiracy, this sort of insanity... Really, what can you do about that? Because they're not trying to profit. They are just genuinely mad people who want to uh, bring everybody along for their conspiracy theory. And I, it's just dangerous. I think we've just got to call it out when we see it and hope that people aren't foolish enough to fall for it. Nick, there's the anti-vaxxer campaign. I can't for the life of me believe anyone these days would be... Uh so wrong-headed on the issue of vaccine, but they are and they're in uh, leafy electorates and they're in obviously yeah. areas like Byron Bay and others. This is, a, this is a concern. Yeah, look, they're dumb and they're dangerous. I mean, what they're spreading has no basis in science, uh, no scientific evidence to support what they're telling people. And it's not that it just doesn't do nothing. It actually causes people to behave in a way which then puts themselves at risk and puts other at risk. I mean, we shouldn't forget there's two and a half million people around the world that have contracted the coronavirus, 165 deaths. This is a serious public health situation and these charlatans need to get out of the way and let the medical authorities, properly trained medical people, do their work. Rita, I did find it interesting in The Australian, there's been a couple of stories by Brad Norrington that uh, Dr Norman Swan, uh, the GP now, you know, media commentator on the ABC, that he has quite a significant financial uh, media company or health media company that he's uh, involved with, that whilst he's been critical of the government, this company's been outbidding for very, very significant government contracts to get out there on the issue of coronavirus? Or should I not be surprised? Well, I was surprised. I think the optics of this are just terrible. And let's not forget some of the uh, predictions he made have found to be completely wrong. Things that he called just straightforward maths actually weren't straightforward because he got it wrong. And he was so heavily critical of the Morrison government a few weeks back, as you might recall. Um, and now we've seen the results of those policies and the policies were right. We have flattened the curve dramatically. We have achieved what we've set out to achieve. And yet, if you listen to his commentary and that of the ABC in, in the early days of these uh, restrictions, you would think that we were just being so reckless and we should be following the New Zealand path and locking everything down and closing all schools immediately. So uh, the way the ABC has uh, championed this, this man, he's not just a commentator, he's almost their chief medical expert uh, in opposition to Australia's chief medical expert. That's mm -hmm. how they presented him for many weeks. That's quietened down now as the curve has flattened. Nick, I've got to go to you. I'll give you the last word. You know, you worked for Julia Gillard. You had a much closer look than I did, being inside the Labor Party, at Kevin Rudd. I've always uh, assessed Malcolm Turnbull and Kevin Rudd as two and the one same person, um, one from the left, one from the right, but they're very similar in character, behaviour, in and out of politics. What's your view? Yeah, look, they're a classic example of that political persona where it's a case of do as I say, not as I do. And so you see these double standards that exist uh, through their behaviour. I mean, look, the thing I would say about um, the controversy around Malcolm Turnbull's biography in the last couple of days, gee whiz, it's creating a lot of publicity, Peter, and it's going to help sell a lot of books. So um, how about we just let the caravan move on, huh? Less said, the better. 
Oh, look, as I said at the top of the show, it will be a bestseller. Either it will genuinely sell or the bloke will buy hundreds of thousands of them and yeah. stick them in the garage at the Harborside Mansion <laughs> just so he can That's be true. successful. He's got deep pockets. He's not going to want to lose. So... Anyway, Poor Alex we'll is see. going to be out there on his bike just buying up all the copies. He's going to be doing a reverse uh, yeah, paper flinging them over the fence. Yeah, books. exactly. Flinging them over the <laughs> fence of all the mates in Wentworth so they can read how wonderful their former member was. Oh, got to stop talking about him. Let's move on. Got to leave it there. Thank you for your company. Thank you very much, Nick. Thanks very much, Rita.